Um, well, welcome everyone to our COPORS event tonight. Um, we have, we're excited to have Dan be our speaker. And uh, Dan is a Salesforce certified application architect with over 10 plus years of experience and over 13 certifications. Um, and our session today is on making your automation configurable using custom metadata. So uh, also want to mention we have flag that we have to give away. So make sure to ask questions and be curious and we will uh, get that to you and get your information at the end. So Dan, whenever you're ready. Cool. Uh, yeah, so as was stated, I've been building solutions for a long time on this platform. I've kind of worked at a lot of big consultancies, worked at big companies and kind of my mindset's always been in that, uh, how do you build what I like to call enterprise scalable solutions. And I think it's something based on whatever your experience is. I'm sure what you built five years ago, you're like, hmm, I wish I had done that differently. And kind of my whole MO and kind of uh, the company that I'm part of, that's kind of our whole motto is how do we build things that don't only solve your problems today, but are really malleable to the future. So if you're going to take away anything from what we're going to kind of talk about today, it's hey, I can build solutions that I know inevitably the business requirements going to change. How do I make that easier for myself to fix or not even fix, enhance in the future? So we're going to go through some like common examples of ways you can use what's called metadata. And then we'll just kind of have an interactive session. So the big thing that uh, kind of the phrase, I don't know if anybody else uses it, but I've kind of coined it and it's uh, the company, our company's motto is, hey, we want to build something that has the mindset of being admin serviceable. Because uh, after doing this for a long time, I've gone into many orgs and we've all been in there where it's like, hey, there's a million pieces of automation. Somebody's saying something as simple as, hey, the, I want this automation to trigger in 10 days rather than every 20 days. And then you're like, I'm scratching my head. How the heck does this work? You're tracking it down. It's in some random workflow rule that mixes with a flow that you're like, this is very confusing. And I spent half a day just locating this. So the whole notion of like this admin serviceable design principle is, hey, how do I make it easier, not just for myself, but for whoever inherits the work that I take place? And there's a silly quote in the matrix that always makes me think of this is that your stakeholders, your business people, they don't care how it works as long as it works. But the reality is everybody should care how it works because that's really the value of your solution. Like whether you're at a 20 person user Salesforce instance or a thousand, you need something that can be malleable and change quickly. Otherwise, you're really hurting the business in the long term. And that really comes down to building a back end that is well thought out, which again, it's hard when you're being given a million different things to do every day, but if you kind of embrace these principles, the end goal is, hey, when those quick requirements come, rather than being a month to make this change, it could be 10 minutes. That's that's the power of what we're trying to unleash. So the question becomes, how do we enable that? And most of this presentation, we're just gonna be going into some actual solution examples. And then at the end, we can spend 10 minutes and do like a little hands-on challenge just to kind of review these concepts and just, if you haven't messed around with metadata, like just give you a chance to see where you go to even build this. So at its core, metadata, it's data that describes all their data. So that's kind of uh, pretty esoteric right off the back of uh, what what does that, where do we go? That's pretty esoteric right off the back. So what does that really mean? So if you think about it, we have like opportunities. Opportunities is defined data. And if I'm building automation, there are components of that data that we might want to trigger other automation off of. So imagine you want to, based on different stages, have an email fire, but that email could be the same on every stage. It could differ. Imagine if you had a metadata that was like, hey, when for this opportunity stage, these are the controls for this stage and you can just reference that and trigger your automation off of that. So you could build one email notification that works on any stage, but it's controlled via metadata. And we'll show examples of this because it is kind of confusing when it's first stated. 
because it, half of us are just struggling to build the solution at hand. And now we're talking about, hey, we want to build a solution on top of our actual solution that controls our solution, which is kind of a, a mind twist in a sense. So again, this is not a, it, this is more in the advanced world of building on Salesforce. But if you master this, you're going to build super cool things and you're going to thank yourself because when somebody's like, hey, change this in six weeks, you're going to be like, oh, I don't even have to do anything except change a variable. Any initial questions about anything I've said that anybody has at the moment? Cool. Uh, so maybe we'll come back to this, but I'll just call out some of the big pros of metadata is that it's essentially like a custom object. You can build it in whatever form you want. You're able to have it, you could have multiple metadata types that are related to each other. So in that example I was talking about, maybe I want controls for my stages. Well, maybe I have three different record types of opportunities and each record type has different stages that have their own rules. So what you could design is, hey, I could have an opportunity setting and then I could have a, object called opportunity stage settings and just have a lookup relationship within my metadata. So all I'm trying to open the mind to is you can design your metadata however you want. And it's really just thinking through how you're giving yourself levers and controls for your automation, for your components, whatever it is that you're referencing it in. And probably the my favorite thing about the custom metadata is that you can deploy it. So if you guys have ever like built some custom settings and have ever had to do change sets, you'll know you can't deploy a custom setting. A little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. But as you're, if you really embrace metadata, you can just deploy your records from one instance to the other, which is really powerful. And then probably the other call out here is just where you can access metadata. So obviously pretty much everywhere, Apex flows, you can use it in formulas, you can use it in validation rules. Formulas and validation rules are, if you go on Trailhead, it's pretty much what they're going to say, hey, look what you can do with metadata. But once you get into the world of development, there's a lot more that you can do. And if you think about what the platforms become now flow at the end of the day, it's literally just configurable Apex. So something I always mention is the mindset you want when you're building a flow it's not really an admin mindset. You need to be thinking about a developer. So something that I think metadata really speaks well to in that mindset is, hey, you never want to be hard coding record type IDs, user IDs, all of that kind of information. That's a great example of, hey, I could build a metadata that has those variables. So let's say you had a routing rule that, hey, this routes to this user ID. Rather than having to remember that that lives in some automation, you have it in metadata. So think how much easier it is to, to update that if that user moves on to another job or so be it. Uh, any, I'm just gonna stop there. Any questions at this point or I'll just keep rocking and rolling. Um, yeah. yeah, I have a question and I'm so sorry cause I know this is probably dumb, but as I said before, I'm new. So, deployable versus change sets i've worked with change sets so i'm, tr I'm trying to figure out why deployable is so great what does that mean so it so like if you think about like an org like and i don't know what kind of orgs you work in but there's some environments where you have a production org you have a uat you have multiple dev orgs so you could be doing development and in your dev org you have this metadata record when you're moving your whole solution to the next environment you just include it in your change set. So rather, and it's just a comparison to custom settings because custom settings, you cannot deploy that information. There's a really minimal advantage, but it's also just from a software development lifecycle and like larger environment management, it has its pros. Oh, so you, by deployable, it's still going in a change set, but what you're saying is yeah. you, you can move it across environments. Whereas like you're saying with these other custom settings, if you do it yeah. in dev and it works, now you gotta go build it again in the next er, environment. Er, yeah, so think about it, it's like a record, like you can't deploy an opportunity record from one sandbox to the other sandbox. 
same thing with a custom setting. I could design a custom setting that has fields on it, but I can't deploy those field values. So it's, a, it's a really, it's not the end of the world, but it's just like something. No, yeah, I understand. I understand what you're, you're saying. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So just since I'm talking so much about metadata, I had to add a slide just saying what what custom settings are good at for, because a lot of the time people are like, hey, do I build custom settings or custom metadata? And they're similar, but the, it, there's, a, there's a time and place for everything. And it's really just understanding what the pros and cons of each are and what you're trying to use that it, that, that metadata for. So custom settings, a lot of the time, what I say is like a really good example of it is, hey, I just want to, I want to just have a quick way to have validation rules active or inactive for like a profile or user level. Since custom settings allow you to define the access level by user or profile, great example of using a custom settings versus metadata. Not to say you couldn't build the same solution with metadata, but it's a quick and easy way to implement. So I'm gonna spend the rest of this, like the next probably like 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, just showing some really progressively more complex examples of solutions built leveraging custom metadata. And I really want this to be interactive. If you have questions, like just jump out and ask it. There's really, there's really nothing more except for everybody to kind of have like the light bulb go off and be like, hey, this is awesome. I'm going to go build something tomorrow <laughs> using custom metadata because I know this is going to make my life easier. That is why I'm here. Yeah. Awesome. Do the ways. Let's see. Let's make sure what screen is this. That is not what I want to share. Okay. So the first thing, the first kind of example of a solution using metadata that I'm going to discuss is a client had a requirement where based on an email template being sent, like in your standard little, hey, contact, send the email, like action on an account or contact record, they wanted that contact to be added to a campaign based on that template being sent. So if you think about what's being asked for there, and if you think about the long-term vision of a solution like this is, hey, across the lifetime, I'm probably going to create a whole lot of different email templates. And there's a whole lot of different campaigns that they might need to be routed to. So right off the back, you're probably if you're like, yeah, I didn't really know about metadata. You'd probably be like, OK, I'm going to go build some automation off of the email message object. I'll check what the template name is, and then I'll figure out how I route that to a contact. So if you think about it, every time a requirement came that a new template needed to have this impact of adding a contact to an email template, you're going to have to go modify that automation. You're going to then need to figure out the routing, build all of that in. And again, it's going to take time. It's not going to be the speed as like a salesperson. They're probably going to spit out five different email templates every week that they're like, hey, I want this added to this campaign, this added to this campaign, et cetera, et cetera. So how you can solve that with metadata is I came here and I built this metadata type. I just called it email template campaign routing. So if you look at this, pretty much just looks like any custom object. And let me enlarge the screen a little bit because it's a little small. And all I did on this metadata type is I created three fields, one called the campaign name, one called the email template name, and then something I'm a big fan of is always adding a a checkbox to just say if it's inactive, just so you can have that legacy of, hey, I used to have this in here. I just have a switch to turn it on and off. Can always go back and audit where this automation lived. So really simple, like object structure, if you think of it. Simply three records or three fields. And if I were to go in here, I could simply be like, hey, we can call this test, test one. We can call the campaign test and we'll just call this test. And right there, created my metadata record. So again, creating custom metadata types, no different than creating a custom object, but it's how you 
take that data and apply it to your automation is where it starts to become powerful. So I'm going to jump into this flow and I, I guess what I'll say is I have, a, I have a very specific way that I build flows in the presentation. I have a link to a blog post about kind of flow naming conventions and patterns. And the big thing that I always like to do is just build things as subflows so that you can always repurpose them however you need. But this flow right here essentially is going to be launched or called from an email message flow. And what it does is it takes that email message record that's created when you send an email. It's first going to go right here and just say, hey, did my email have an email template ID? If it has that, I'm then just going to use a get record. You'll see right here, all I'm doing is saying, hey, get me my record for my email template campaign routing, where my email template name equals the name of my email template. So right off the back, all I need to do is query this and look for a match based on the email template. Right here, all I'm saying is, hey, did we find a record on this metadata or not? If I don't find one, it means nothing's gonna happen. If I do find one, then I'm gonna look for that campaign by name. And I think just one thing to call out here is don't hard code IDs for anything. In the world of Apex and flows, it doesn't matter if it's a campaign, doesn't matter if it's a user, just avoid using IDs for anything like record types, queues, all of that. Always query based on the developer name and not even the label because the developer name is always unique. So again, this is this mindset of, yeah, you might be building flows, but you're really an Apex, uh, a junior Apex developer just doing it without writing lines of code. So all we're doing here is, hey, so just revisiting this, I'm using that metadata record I found to then find the campaign. And then the rest of this is just going through the process of adding that user to the campaign. It's that simple. It's like, yes, this looks like a lot because this flow did some interesting things of working multifaceted based on a leader contact, just how the email message object is structured. But if you just think about what you're creating when you're creating a campaign member, yeah, let's just open this up. When you create a campaign member, all you really need to link is a campaign ID and then a leader contact ID. So that piece of automation that we wrote at the top here is really just aggregating the pieces of information that our automation then references to get the correct components to create that campaign membership. So I'm going to stop there and see what questions we have. That, that was a lot, but really the big thing here is Hey, I did. My goal was to add a add a leader contact to an email to a campaign based on a specific email template being set. And how we just designed this is any template, any campaign. All I need to do to have this automation work for it is simply to go to this custom metadata type and add a record that contains the campaign name and email template. So forevermore, when somebody writes that new email template, zero effort for you to apply the same automation to it. So any any questions from anybody on this one? I'll take silence as no questions. Uh, cool. I hope this isn't uh, scaring anybody yet, because we're going to get more and more complex as we go, or not complex, just really pushing the limits of how, like what you can interpret data to do. Let's close this down. Okay. Real fast. I, I think because yeah. I've done a little bit with custom metadata types. Um, and the thing that this is just more of an observation, I was get it's hard to think of it as like terms of custom metadata as types. Like for me, so again, someone who's new, I keep thinking it's like a pick list or something, but really it by calling it custom metadata type, it's just basically anything you want it to be, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's essentially a, a custom object that defines other things. It defines, 
it defines your setup of things. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the best way I can frame it is that it's custom records and objects, but they're not business records that are autom they're back at end objects, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just it hypes for some reason throws me off. I'd like <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, just wanted to let you know I was no. listening and make a comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. So this next one I'm going to show is just uh, it's just another example of a creative way that that uh, our metadata can make your solution easier to use. So this solution is a solution that we have at our company for account plans. So if you think about like what an account plan process is, it's normally, hey, every three to six months based on something on an account, I need my sales rep to review it, answer some questions and do some things. So if you think about the automation that goes into that, you probably want to automatically create those records using a scheduled flow based on some cadence, which is maybe a few days before the quarter end, before the quarter start, whatever, so be it. You also might need a fail safe to say, hey, I have this scheduled flow, but it runs daily, but it didn't run and I need to force it to create. And then there might be some notions of assignment of those account plans. Maybe you have your automation built where, hey, account plans are assigned to it, to the active user who's the owner of the account. But what happens if that user is inactive? Who should it be assigned to? Would it make sense to assign it to an inactive user? So with that in mind, for this account plan solution, we designed a metadata structure where for the account plans, there are different types of account plans. There's a standard, there's a strategic, there could be any types of account plans. And maybe those different account plans behave differently. Maybe when they're created is, is different for the two different types. Maybe there's notifications that get sent for one, but not another, et cetera, et cetera. All little nuances of how they behave, but it's the same general records that you're interacting with. So in this metadata type, we've essentially enabled the ability to control, hey, let's create these X amount of days before the quarter start. If we don't find a matching user based on whatever our routing rules are, default it to a queue of whatever queue developer name we provide. Maybe this one where you want to send a notification to the user when that record's created, and then who knows, maybe something failed and we just want to force creation of this the next time the automation runs. So, hey, quick way to auto create it. So if we go into the flow now, what we're going to do is obviously the first thing, we're going to get our account plan setting type. So on the accounts, there's an account plan type. We're just going to match it. We'll then see right within here that that information is then referenced for routing. If I don't find any of these matching routings, I'm then going to route it to the queue. And how do I get the queue? It's based on my account plan settings. So if you think about how you might have solved this before, you might have put a ID in here. You might have hard coded the name of the queue. Again, all things that will probably change at some point. You're going to forget where it lived and you're going to be really frustrated and pulling your hair out as you try to dig through everything to identify it where in this structure again one stop shop i have something called account plan settings just go there change it never need to think about it again so very simple simple approaches that have a lot of power and just within here i'm just going to show this is there's a formula field that controls the scheduled flow. And this formula field, all it's doing is it's looking at what kind of account plan. And then it's looking at the metadata that corresponds with that specific account plan. So this is field just sets true or false if an account plan should be created for that account. You'll see there are two conditions. There's one if I'm forcing creation, or if today's date, uh, if today's date equals, 
Yes. So it's seeing if today's date equals the quarter start less the amount of days that I indicated on my metadata. So again, if those requirements change to say, hey, I want to create this 60 days before the quarter start, you don't need to do anything again except touch the metadata. Any questions about this example? Cool. Okay, now we're going to get into the world of uh, using metadata on UI components. So this is uh, the solution that we have here is something we call the stage highlight component. So this is a custom solution here on the right that essentially guides your sales team stage by stage to do everything they need to do to close that opportunity. So for a company that has a really linear and controlled sales path, this is a kind of a enhanced user experience solution where you're not really gonna worry about having tons of validation rules. Everything's baked into this single component. And how this component works is configured via a pretty complex custom metadata type. So things such as the contact rules that are required stage by stage, controlled via metadata. The buttons even displayed on this on the screen, controlled via metadata. So this entire component reads metadata to, re to assemble it at every stage. So let's go into this a little bit. And this one might be a little over over the top. Why is this not? So that's enlarged a bit. Okay, so examples of things that you can control via metadata right here, and this is definitely going down the advanced advanced route, is within here you can signify what fields are required to advance to the next stage by simply putting a CSV list of fields. And let me open a different example. Yeah. So right here, you can control what fields are required to advance the stage based on a CSV list of fields, same with required account fields. If you think about processes, sometimes there are those validation rules that's like, hey, these fields on the account must be filled in before I progress to a certain stage. What's awesome about this component is it's right here. You don't even have to navigate to the account. You can control if products are required to be entered. You can control if roles are required. You can indicate if you display these different actions. You can even control what types for a task being log are displayed. So this is just about everything you can imagine can be controlled on that component via this metadata. And then how that works is similar to everything we've been showing where, hey, I'm just going to go grab my metadata setting for that specific stage. And then it's just interpreting all of that inform information. We've developed some of our uh, some custom uh, flow invocable actions where simply you feed through the list of roles and this action will tell you if they're all present. We have subflows that check opportunity products. And all of this within this component is just referenced via that metadata. So even buttons displayed, if we go down here, you'll see, hey, it's saying display this. So rather, if you can think about how you might design something like this, otherwise you might have for every stage an individual screen. Think about how monster of a flow that is. Think about the maintenance of that pain in the butt. But those Frankenstein flows are difficult to troubleshoot in any capacity. So again, it's going back to this notion of admin serviceable design, where you're able to recycle how you build something and then just tweak the data that controls it. So this is definitely like getting into PhD level Salesforce build, but I think it's showing how far you can push this and really build yourself something that, hey, I don't really need to worry about the, ch the frequent changes that the business is going to provide because all I have to do is update a record to control all components of it. 
So really powerful. Definitely building something like this. This is went through years of development to reach this point. But again, it's possible. And the things that you can do are earth and down, make your lives easier in the long run. And it's cool because when you leave, what kind of documentation do you need to provide? Go look at the metadata. It, you put in detailed descriptions of every single field and it should be kind of self-explanatory. Like that, that to me is the power of this approach is you're making it easier for the next person that's responsible for the system. So I'm going to stop for a minute to see any questions. If anybody's kind of like, this is insane. How, why am I? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, any any reaction? I was just going to say it's impressive use of uh, the custom metadata there, but uh, I'm curious what that flow looks like as well for the opportunity stage. That's uh, that's impressive it's, uh, as well. It's actually not that much in here. Most of this length is just like field validations that could be a subflow. So the actual like logic in here is pretty logicless, except just custom, like the only thing you customize when this is built is simply putting the fields by stage that need to exist. Otherwise, the metadata handles everything that goes into this. So like this component, when we implement it for a client, it normally takes us a day or so to implement, like once for the, we have the requirements of what's required stage by stage. So like really this flow is not that complex because this whole path right here is just validating your record. And then we just coded some apex invocable methods that do some of the more advanced lifting. Like we have a custom uh, invocable method where I just pass in a record and that list of API names, and it will check if any of them are blank. So it's a custom, some custom apex that we wrote. And it's something that we then can use again and again all throughout our, our builds. And it's just a handy way. Like I use this when I'm even like, somebody wants a validation rule, hey, build it with custom metadata, mm -hmm. all this custom invocable method we have. It's that simple. And I may have missed something at the beginning, but the, this flow actually is for uh, moving through different stages of the opportunity. What's what's it look like when it runs? Yeah, so th that is this component here on the right. Okay. So if I click like next stage here, you'll see, hey, don't have these fields that are required. If I need to log a task, simply cl click here. These types displayed, mm -hmm. completely dynamic based on what I indicated on my metadata. So metadata. this is, yeah, uh, clients love this solution because if you think about how an opportunity process is typically built, you have a lot of validation rules. Your sales team clicks save, 10 different things pop up, try again. Where here, hey, just right in your face. You're only focused on what matters at that moment in time. And then any like custom little things any client has, we just can build additional buttons for whatever ancillary processes. It really just builds a simplified UX that often companies want, but don't know how to achieve on the Salesforce platform without really spending way too much money to develop custom Lightning Web components, which again, flows have really evolved over probably the last 18 months to such an extent that the need to do LWCs is becoming probably further and further away. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind of like the big one. I don't know if you guys have any interest in like, I had a little, I don't want to call it challenge, but just like a little a solution to like put these concepts to work just to see like get a little hands on i don't know if we want to spend five minutes got down a solution we can talk about it discuss it and then we can kind of wrap up here but uh yeah i hope i hope this was meaningful i hope this kind of like opened up the eyes to like how far you can push metadata like it's only as far as your creativity can take you and under like structuring it to interact with how you build your automation. Mm. Yeah. And if we don't want to put our hands on the keys because it's late in the day, no problem. We can just talk about this. Uh, like it's really whatever 
or small groups. So it's really whatever you guys would like to do. Maybe just talk through it. <clears throat> yeah, no, that works. So, so I kept this simple. It can obviously have layers and layers of complexity, but at its simplest, I feel like this requirement comes up all the time is, hey, I want to auto close my opportunities after X amount of days. Sometimes it gets more complex where every stage has a different control of like how many days. But for this, we're just going to say, hey, I want to auto close all opportunities if they're open after X amount of days. So how I would go about it. And I'm going to take the simplest approach for an org. We don't have record. We have one record type. We have no future plans of other record types. How you could easily implement this is you could create a metadata type called like opportunity settings. You could create a field on it that's like called like close after number of days. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then what you would have to do is in a before say flow whenever whenever like uh the stages change you could essentially have a field that is called number close after number of days you can then stamp that value from the metadata onto the opportunity and the only reason you'd want to do that is because you're going to want to then if we're going to use a scheduled flow to close this out we're going to need a formula field like a boolean formula field to essentially control that so we have the metadata it has the field on there that has a number of days we're just going to grab that stamp it in that field and then build a, a boolean formula field that says hey if today equals the date well i guess we're also going to have to track the last date change date and time for this to work but essentially hey the last date that this change less than this number of days, if that equals today, give me true. And then you can have your scheduled flow, set the stage to the close. You can set your closed reason to auto close. And right there, you have a nice piece of automation that when the salespeople come back and tell you, we actually want to auto close it after 120 days, it takes you two minutes to change and you never need to think about it again. Mm -hmm. But again, that's a simplistic approach. If I was building this, I'd probably have it twofold where I have an opportunity setting metadata and assume that I'm going to have multiple different record types. I'd probably also assume that I'm going to have different requirements for every stage. So I'd probably create another meta, uh, relational table metadata type called opportunity stage settings and just relate the two. And then you have the utmost flexibility at every level to control that. Hmm. But yeah, any any other questions? No, but good reminder to make use of the custom metadata. <laughs> yes, yes. If there's anything to take from this is no solution that you're building, like there is a use case for it in every single thing that you do. Mm -hmm. It's just how far can you push it in Again, like going down this path is you need to really understand the ins and outs of how Salesforce works from the back end. But like this is this is not uh this isn't just hey, I'm building a simple flow that hey, this happened, this happened. This is getting into the world of thinking like a developer and really, really understanding the components that go into any action you're taking and how you trigger them. What's your blog? uh yeah our our company's website is just campfire solutions.io okay so it's the blog on the website yeah i've been trying to be better about uh putting stuff up here that is pretty esoteric but it should all be uh interesting so feel free to check it out you can find me on linkedin add me ask me questions but uh yeah definitely uh check it out there's some cool stuff on there and definitely more cool stuff coming Awesome. Any other questions? 
comments? Yeah, I have a question actually. Sorry, <laughs> I just have so many. What if um you needed, let's say it's, you know, you've been a metadata pro for a number of years and I don't know, for some reason I can't think of, you want to know what that, where that piece of metadata is being used, you know, and all the different things. Is there an easy way to do that or no? Uh, the answer is yes. There's different degrees of what you want to know. Okay. So for instance, just like any custom field, you have the where is this used. So nope. if there's a specific field, bam, you can instantly know that. If you're like more advanced and using like VS Studio, like you can search for your metadata type name, like, but most of the time, hey, you have fields that are using and you can just simply just go in there and just look where it's used and. Got it. Thank you. You could also try to delete it and see, and see everywhere that it tells you that it's being referenced, but only do that in the sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good question. Any other last questions? No? Okay. Well, Dan, thank you so much. It was so interesting. Um, I learned a lot tonight. And um, yeah, if, uh, yeah, definitely add Dan on LinkedIn. Um, and we'll have this recording. Um, I will be posting it on, um, it will be on the Cop Force uh, homepage. Uh, and then it'll also be on YouTube as well. And I will post it on social media so you guys can check it out. Um, yeah, but. Uh, it was, this was awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, I hope everyone has a great night. Yeah, you too. Real fast. What did you say the first place was Cut Force? Cop Force. Op Force. Cop. K O P. Cop Force. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. And then Christian and Wendy definitely. Um, Wendy, I know we're connected on LinkedIn. I don't think Christian we are, but definitely send me, uh, I'll send you guys a LinkedIn uh, to get some information for your swag. Oh, nice. <laughs> Will do. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's Thanks, Charlie. Good seeing you. you. Yes, you too. Have Thanks, Dan. Day, that was awesome. I mean, it was well yeah. over my head, but at least, like you said, I know that there's so much that we can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was definitely. Uh, I had prefaced it that it was going to be esoteric and really push the limits of probably what you know about Salesforce, but uh, knowing it's here, it can only push you to be a better builder on the platform. Yeah. I like how you kind of said, I like, think of everything like that you're like developer. It's kind yeah. Of like a paradigm shift. And I shouldn't say that because it's the antithesis of what Salesforce says, but uh, flows are not for admins, they're for developers yeah. and, or like admins that think like developers. Yeah. Well My word of advice, you can blow up an org with a uh, flow. So <laughs> learn a little bit about governor limits, Apex governor limits. It will definitely, uh, definitely make you a better flow builder. Nice. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, Thank have a you. great night. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.